Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Duke Oishi. Today on Think Tech, we'll visit with the William S. Richardson School of Law at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. There, we'll meet some of the faculty and some students in the LLM program, the Master's of Law program for foreign law graduates. We'll find out what this program is like and how it's helping to build relationships with other countries around the world and how this helps Hawaii. All that and more this week on Think Tech. Some people say that the Richardson School of Law in Manoa is a kind of legal Camelot. I have a particular fondness for the school because I went there. It shows, Duke. I also graduated, by the way. <laughs> Beyond its academic excellence, it's a school which prides itself on its diversity and its ability to build bridges with Asia and other parts of the world. Over the past few years, the school's faculty and students have participated in an increasing number of conferences and collaborations with lawyers, professors, diplomats, and officials from other countries. The school has become a lawyer's version of the East-West Center. Part of the school's international outreach is its LLM program for foreign law graduates. We thought we'd visit Manoa and touch base with some of the faculty associated with the program. We were able to speak with Allison Connor, who was my professor, and Spencer Kimura. You know everybody. <laughs> we have a number of very special areas. One of them is international, especially Pacific Asian law. So we hope to internationalize the training for our students. We uh, urge them to go abroad, but we also want to bring people to them. So one goal was to provide a good program for them, one year of study in the U.S., and one goal was to bring abroad to us, because not all our students can go abroad. Mm -hmm. So they do bring, they come from all over, as Spencer can tell you, and they uh, bring a wonderful perspective and diversity to our classes. Yeah, that's right. Um, most people don't know that uh, law is actually a bachelor's degree um, outside the United States. So our students who have either a bachelor's degree or the equivalent which enables them to practice in their home country um, come to the law school not only with a diverse uh, geographical cultural background but also having studied law in their country they have a lot to contribute to the discussion here about uh, comparing different legal systems. Uh, this is a one-year program, so we require only one course. They take an introduction to U.S. law, which really helps them sort of set up, um, and that's the one class they all have together. After that, they can choose almost any course. There are a few that are um, clinics and some things are more difficult for it because of ABA rules, but they can take almost any course, and we encourage them to try all kinds of different classes. So they really make their own program, and we try to tailor it for them. When they go to the classes, uh, they pr participate like everybody else, and they take exams like everybody else? They do, they do participate. Uh, we do actually have to tell them, as um, Spencer said, many of them come from very different systems where some of them later confessed to me that when they were in law school abroad, they never went to class, virtually never. So, and many of them, they didn't do the reading. They didn't have to do the reading. So we do tell them that they do have to go to class and they do have to do the reading before class um, so they can participate. You know, there's quite a range of uh, students um, based upon their background and their level of preparation. We have practicing attorneys here who have do multi, you know, multinational contracts in English who are very prepared for uh, what we go through here. And there's, there are others who are coming straight out of their undergraduate program. So there is quite a, a range of um, prep levels of preparation. And uh, for example, one of our students had never taken a written final exam before. It was all oral, um, sitting in a room with four professors, and they shoot questions at you for four hours. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you know, so uh, there are different levels of preparation, um, and they, they just have to adjust. And, and that's one of the, reason, the big reason why they're here, is to learn how American lawyers are being trained. And, they can take that knowledge back to their home country and it'll, it'll serve them uh, to interact and um, be more knowledgeable about how we do it here in the United States. Well, many of them have a very, very specific legal specialty they want to focus on. For some, it's international. We've had a number who really focused on international. Um, for some, it's environmental because the law school also has really an excellent program in environmental, so we have a number of people who come because of that. Uh, some of them want to focus on business law because they're in practice, and so they would like to um, take particular courses here. Uh, U.S. commercial law is very influential in a lot of places, and it certainly makes a good comparison. So they focus on a number of areas. Some of them have, in fact, some of them we've had 
wanted to focus, they were very interested in our Native Hawaiian uh, Center, uh, Native Hawaiian Law, and have taken those courses and been very involved in indigenous issues. So they're attracted for all kinds of uh, reasons. Yeah. In a globalized economy that we have, that knowing one, to, to improve your legal English, not just plain English, but knowing that vocabulary and the way people use different terminology, and also the culture of uh, the way lawyers operate in the United States uh, can serve them in the future. Uh, if, if you have an LLM and you have experience dealing with people from different cultures and particularly the United States, it could be very helpful with just kind of greasing the tracks for any kind of negotiation or interaction with uh, foreigners, foreign lawyers or clients. Well, we see some of our graduates. We know where they are. We stay in touch with them. When you know lawyers in other countries and you have legal business uh, or you need referrals, it's a lot easier. But if you know somebody, uh, it, it changes everything. Oh, it's so much better to call a classmate. Then we talked with the students themselves. Aya from the Philippines, Sasha from Switzerland, Li Feng from China, Mushtaba from Iran, and Nicole from Germany. As you'll see, all of them are polished and charming and global in their views. It's great to have them here at the school. First, we spoke with Aya, a lawyer from the Philippines. Um, I'm a lawyer in the Philippines. Uh, I got my um, bachelor's degree in 2007, and then I passed the bar in 2008. And then um, since then, I've been working as a lawyer for a nonprofit organization. I came here, uh, decided to come here for my LLM because I actually want to specialize in environmental law. Um, but I still want to focus um, on the community, so I want to still be working with farmers and indigenous peoples but focusing more on their environmental issues when I get back in the, to the Philippines. It's in, in my country, it's implementation that's lacking. So mm -hmm. I was hoping to take away from like here, if there are any you know, key aspects to implementation that they um, practice, like how to get, you know, how to uh, make the loss a reality. <laughs> this is all a kind of life change for you. This program and uh, the school and the return to the Philippines to practice in an area that you were mm -hmm. not practicing before? Uh, actually, I've always wanted to work uh, in, with environment, environmental issues uh, ever since I was in college. But uh, actually after graduate, because I have um, a bachelor's degree in literature, and I wanted to go into environmental science, but I don't have any science background. So I went into law. And, but even during law school and you know, throughout my short practice, um, it's always been like, you know, I want to go back to that practice, so I guess like this is the next step to you know finally go in that direction. Spencer, our coordinator, has been very uh, like supportive, and he answers all our questions very quickly. So it's like gives you the confidence that it's a good program you're getting into. But our group is really small. From the start, we've become really close, and we do a lot of things together. And I really enjoy the company of the other students. Everyone here in Hawaii, you know, people on the street will just say hi to you, and that's very, um, like, very specific cultural thing. Cause you, you know, in, in my country, no one will say hi to you that you don't know. Then we spoke with Sasha, a lawyer from Switzerland. Wanting to expand my knowledge about Asian law and doing that in an American law school. And then there's always Hawaii is a beautiful place to come to. So, because it's a small law school, you're you're uh, everybody is curious about you. People want to know you. There, there's no, um, we're not separated from the other students. We we with the other students. You get to know people really fast. Well, what what about business? Now you, undoubtedly you were. Uh, oh my goodness, you were doing uh, inheritance law, construction law corporate law and litigation. How will this program enhance your legal position back in Basel? I would say in the bigger law firms in Switzerland, it has become uh, a trend or almost a requirement for associates to have an LLM degree. Uh, the main thing 
for the employer, the law firms, um, is that you have people trained in legal English coming back to you. So a lot of uh, clients are international uh, companies, as we have heard before, there are contracts uh, made written in English. Um, you have to to um, talk to lawyers, sometimes even in Europe, to talk to other lawyers to discuss cases, you, you use English. If there's like more than two or three parties involved, and instead of talking three different languages, you switch to English. So English is quite an important language, so that's sure a, a main thing. I just want to broaden my vision. I want to get new experiences, see something new, see how uh, it's done in the US, see what I can get out of that. Maybe I can adapt something, take back home for me. It's like, oh, that's a good idea. So what courses here in the school uh, have appealed to you most? Uh, are you focusing in any particular area, you know, based on your perception of what you'll need back in Switzerland later? Um, I'm doing an, a degree in international law with focus on Asian law. So I have Japanese and Chinese law with Professor Connor, he's Chinese law and society. And with Professor Levin, I have uh, Japanese law and society. That's basically a field where I didn't have much knowledge and I decided I, I want to go into that field, learn something new. Then we spoke with Li Feng, a law professor from China. I'm an associate professor of law and uh, uh, law school of Shanghai Institute of Foreign Trade, China. So I got my uh, bachelor, of, bachelor of Law in 1998, long, long ago, right? And then I got my uh, Master of Law in 2001 and my Doctor of Law in two, uh, 2004. So for me, this program, LLM program, uh, can help me to enhance my legal English skill. That's the main task for me because I'm a professor. I teach international investment law in my law school, but it's it's not easy for me to recommend my students to go abroad because I, if I have no experience, you know, abroad, how can I do that for them? And how can I teach them about, you know, foreign investment law? So that's, that's why I decide to, you know, come here and study. And you know, um, LLM's program is so popular in recent years in China. The advantage of this program is that it's, it's not, not a long program, just one year. So for me, I cannot leave China for a long time. So one year is, is good. And I can uh, know real education, real legal education in US. Because I talked with my uh, friends and uh, some of, you know, visiting scholar uh, from the U.S. in my law school, and they are so nice. They uh, told me a lot of you know, uh, education in U.S., but I want first-hand resources. So that's why I'm here. And Hawaii is so beautiful, you know. Uh, we can enjoy the sunshine here, and we can enjoy so much, you know, uh, outdoors exercise here. So I love here, and I we and I actually enjoyed international friendship here. For example, I I cho I chose you know IP law and uh, uh, international business transaction course and uh, introduction to American legal system and business association. So I met some students here and. Uh, discussion, uh, discussed with, with them about the course, and some of them, you know, they lent me their uh, reference books. So nice. And uh, uh, you can see our program is a small program, and uh, each of them from different countries. So I call it like a mini 
United Nations. <laughs> right. And that's, that's so excited. Then we spoke with Mushtaba, a lawyer from Iran who has a firm in Jordan. I graduated from the University of Tehran in 1999. Then I immediately I took a part in the uh, bar examination of Tehran and I became a lawyer there. <coughs> uh, in 2003, I established my own law firm, which is Dotgu Law Firm, and with my sister because she's a lawyer as well. Me, uh, Dr. Rahnamov, which was my classmate, and Dr. Bakshi, which was my, cl my classmate. Majority of share is for me and my sister. That's why I appointed my sister instead of me when I came out from the Iran, because of some situation that you know what, what is going on there. Then I went, uh, three, three years ago, I went out from Iran. I went to uh, Oman, which is the close to the Iran, and that's, it's you know growing increasingly because of good you know policy that the uh, Sultan Qaboos mm -hmm. is running there. Uh, actually, my brother and me we had also a business for maritime and seafood, and actually I, I'm licensed of Oman as well, and I I've, I've worked there for one and a half year. Then, <coughs> as you know, Oman is a unique country that has a NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement with America. And uh, it was a good opportunity for me to go, uh, to come to the United States to know more about the American law, you know, to uh, help the Omanis lawyer and also American lawyers uh, and American um, a businessman that they want to come to the Oman because of the unique <coughs> opportunity for investment there. I called to my, one, one of my friends in Alaska. I called her, I told, okay, uh, I'm admitted by these three universities, what I have to do? Told, uh, don't think about it, go to the Hawaii immediately. <laughs> I told, okay. She told me that if you go to the Hawaii, if you go to the Washington, you will find yourself in a you know, in an exact American culture that you are not used to it. But if you go to the Hawaii, you can find yourself in your hometown. You suppose that you are in your hometown. Now I'm feeling. Actually here, first day that I came here, uh, I've been acquainted with a great man, Mr. Spencer, Kimura. Uh, I, I made a lot of friends with, for myself here with the, uh, you know, great culture of Hawaii. I became, I'm, becoming uh, acquaintance with uh, the culture of Hawaii, which is a unique, I think. You know, first uh, day that I wanted to come here, you know, I was, you know, a little, you know, stressed about, you know, what's, what, what will go on there, you know, and what has happened for me. And, you know, it was my first, first trip to the America, I didn't know. I, I've been in a lot of country, 48 country, majority in Europe. But in so America, 48 countries. 48 country, yeah. 48. 48, yeah. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in 48 country, the majority. Anybody else here? 48 countries? No. Uh, you and me? Okay. <laughs> okay. When I came here, I, you know, I found myself in a community that is not that much, you know, different from the culture that is it. It's in. Asia. I think it's 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 the influence of Asian people that they came for a long time here. So that's a great time for me, and I, I'm sure that I cannot find the great time like this in my life. Finally, we spoke with Nicole, a lawyer from Germany. You're from the University of Tübingen. Yes. Did I pronounce yes, it right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I'm Nicole from Germany, and I had a great opportunity to get a good education in Germany about German law and European law. Ah. And as you maybe know, I have I speak a couple languages. I'm very interested in five, wasn't it? 
Yes, five um, languages. Yes, okay. I'm very interested in different cultures and nations. And I've interned with American, German, and Italian lawyers. And um, the William S. Richardson School of Law gives me now a great opportunity to expand this knowledge about international law. That's why I'm here at the school. <clears throat> That's why I chose the school. And I'm focusing now on Asian law and on basic courses in American law. So I'm taking constitutional law, Japanese law, and Chinese law. And yeah, maybe next year I could take a Korean law as well. Offer. North Korea or South Korea? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what the school's going to offer. We'll see what happens. Yes, It'll be yes. different. We I'm know definitely that. open for every, anything. <laughs> well, that's very ambitious, my goodness. So, what, what, so what's, what's the plan after the program now? How, how would you make a living when you're finished? That's a very good question. I don't know that yet. Well, I just graduated from the law school in Germany, and now I'm in this program again. I'm definitely open for all kind of opportunities. And as my uh, fellow classmates said, Earlier, it's a great chance to meet people here. It's a great chance to meet foreign people, international lawyers, and maybe there are options that are going to open up, and we'll see what's, uh, what's going to happen. Yeah. So what do you think of the program? Do you like it? Yes, I like it so far. It's really, really nice. Uh, on the one hand, sure, it's a wonderful place here to study. Hawaii is beautiful. But on the other hand, the program, yes, like you said, is, it's very di diverse, uh, create opportunities for everyone to choose whatever each person wants and interest is of. And um, yes, it's even like my fellow classmates said before, the ohana that is here that I think you don't find in a lot of other schools. I feel very welcomed here, and uh, it was not very difficult to meet American students or even my other classmates. Um, you get to know each other. You can talk to everyone. The, the classes are small, and a lot of activities are offered at the school, what I really, really like here. Mm. And so the weekends are even covered by that, and you meet up, and you do interactions with all the other students. And so what do you think of the Socratic method? Uh, did, they, did they use that in Germany? No, we don't use it. Uh, but and at the beginning, it was kind of weird, and I had to get used to it. But right now, I really, really like it. It's a great option, especially for us master students, uh, graduate students. It's, I think, better to think about the, uh, things, to discuss things, and to do research than just sitting in a lecture and absorbing what is getting taught to you. So I really like it. And I would think it's maybe comparable to some seminars that we have in Germany, like in small groups where we do research about a specific area of law. And yeah, so I really like it. No visit to the school will be complete without a walk around its courtyard and law library. So we joined my professor, Alison Connor and Spencer Kimura to do just that. Uh, no, I think I'll pass. <laughs> I, I keep wanting to call them kids, but they're not kids. You know, they're beyond that, and they're all graduate lawyers, and some of them law professors and successful business lawyers, you know, who have successful firms and do international commerce. They're here to learn American law so they can use that in their practices overseas. They're, they're easy to talk to because they've been through it already. Yeah, so, you know, our job is to uh, show them around, to uh, give them a, a, a true view of Hawaii, and a good view of Hawaii so that they will tell people, you know, their peers and their colleagues in their home countries what it's like here, that it's a good place, and to get more people to come. I mean, this is the way we build bridges, and that's, that's to its credit what the law school is doing, and that's what these kids are doing.
If you want to know more about the international LLM program at the law school, check out law.hawaii.edu. Beyond that, why don't you do what they're doing? Study abroad. I did, and in fact I met my wife in Tokyo. You can help our state reach out and be a global connection just like they are. Tech is global, and Hawaii must also be global. Absolutely. Coming soon, on October 28th at the Plaza Club, Think Tech and the Hawaii Venture Capital Association will present a luncheon called can there be a renaissance for agriculture in Hawaii? The program will feature Dyron DeMaia of Kai Market, Claire Sullivan of Whole Foods, Andres Albano of CB Richard Ellis, Richard Ha of Hamakua Springs, and now Kyle Data of the Ulupono Initiative. And good news, the Plaza Club will be serving local food for this luncheon program. October 28th, check it out now on thinktechhawaii.com or hvca.org. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we'd like to thank our underwriters. Thanks to the Scheidler Family Foundation. Jay Scheidler through the Scheidler Family Foundation is an active supporter of a number of educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaii Electric Company, Hiko and his affiliates Miko on Maui and Helco on the Big Island are deeply committed to supporting the communities they serve. We are very appreciative of their support. Galen Ho. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace firm, which has a large footprint and commitment to Hawaii. We greatly appreciate Mr. Ho's support. The High Tech Development Corporation, HTDC, is a state agency dedicated to developing Hawaii's high tech industry, diversifying our economy, and providing quality jobs for our people. We appreciate HTDC's work, and we're very thankful for its generous support. Well, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech all week. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For more Think Tech videos and for sponsorship and underwriting opportunities on Think Tech, please check out our website at thinktechhawaii.com. I'm Jay Fidel. Thanks for joining us on Think Tech. And I'm Duke Oishi. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>